what we have right here is a simple example of the shake module and the, the easy camera shake module is very similar and it has the same problem and same solution. Uh, so I want to show the issue really fast and how to fix it and then I'll go into why that solution works. So first and foremost, all we have here is a sustained shake. So every frame we're just applying that shake to the camera C frame and that's it. So if we hit play, we'll see the camera's shaking. And right now we've got it locked to 60 frames a second as our target FPS. But if we change it to, let's say 240, we'll see it becomes a lot more violent. So that seems problematic. Switch back to 60, it becomes a little more tame. So a lot of people have seen this and have thought that there is a delta time problem with the, the shake modules. Uh, but that's not the case. The, the real fact of the matter here is that what we're seeing is a, a drift problem where the Roblox camera scripts are using the previous value of the camera C frame in order to do its next calculation, which is totally fine. It, it makes sense for it to do that. When we're not in scriptable camera mode, it makes sense that it assumes that it has full control of the camera. So the fact that we're manipulating the camera while it thinks it has control, uh, it makes sense that things might have a little bit of undefined behavior. In order to fix this, all we have to do is cache the value of the C frame of the camera before we apply the shake, and then reapply that cache value after the render has completed. That way the next frame, the camera scripts that are running think that the camera has the same value that it set before. We're basically tricking it and adding this shake effect without any side effects. So how do we do that? Quite simple, we're just gonna create a new value, we'll just call it camcf, we'll just initialize it to uh, the camera's current C frame, and then we're gonna just copy paste this, and we're gonna cache that value again every time right before we apply the shake. So basically what we're assuming here is that uh, we are shaking after the camera scripts have added or done whatever they need to do to the camera. So in this case, our priority is last. And so we're pretty sure that this is happening after the, the camera scripts have applied the C-frame. So this value should be what those scripts have set it to. So then we're adding our effects. And then what we're gonna do is we're just gonna do a run service. Let's get the run service here. Run service dot heartbeat, connect to that. And we'll reset the camera C-frame to cam CF. And that is the full solution. So we hit play again. We see we have our shake. And if we set it to 240, we notice the intensity remains exactly the same. So you can see that uh, the FPS actually has no effect on the intensity of the camera. And that's because once again, these modules do work properly under different frame rates. The real issue under the hood was just a drift problem where the camera scripts were grabbing and referencing the camera C-frame directly. And because we're modifying it, that was causing all sorts of trouble. So again, the solution is simply to cache the value that the camera scripts have decided to set and then reapply that on Heartbeat. Now, the reason we can do that is because Heartbeat runs after the render has completed. So at this point, if all you care about is the solution here, that, that's it. If we go and take a look at how the task scheduler works, this is just a really condensed version of what you'll find in the task scheduler page here. Uh, we just don't need all this other stuff. All we really care about is kind of the fact that there's something that comes before render, render happens, and then other things. The way our setup is going right now is we've got our render going and any code that we've bound using bind to render step, uh, we've also bound to some priority level. So the built-in camera scripts are gonna be bound to the camera render priority. So these are Roblox camera scripts. And technically in this example, I've put the shake camera under last here, but it doesn't really matter. The fact of the matter is that the camera scripts run here and the shake runs here, and then the scene is rendered. So Roblox actually paints the image for the frame and we're done. Then we run everything else, all this other stuff. So like for instance, heartbeat runs down here and some other stuff as well. So all that happens after the render is completed, which means anything that we modify after this point is not gonna affect the actual rendering of our current frame. So that's why we can actually set the camera C frame back and, on heartbeat and not have any adverse effect because heartbeat comes after the render has completed. So then, 
Uh, our code loops back, it comes into here, the Roblox scripts run again, and it thinks that the camera is the same as it set it last because we had reset it. So that's the gist of it. Now that means also that technically our reset code right here, the, the only important thing here is that it happens after our render is complete. So after we've set our shake and everything and before the next time those camera scripts run. So technically that means that, well, let, let's just put it down here. So we have our camera reset code here at the moment, but we could technically put it in input somehow, uh, or we could put it for instance on render priority first, and that would work uh, just the same. So as long as it comes after the render and before the next time this camera scripts run, that camera reset code will fix the problem.